the most insane lies on paternity court. Things happen or said in the bedroom that may not always be. But it was never, I mean, and it was Well, not, are you speaking a word this afternoon? I'm not saying Uh, so basically you're admitting that you just lying? How did you see her messages? You looked through her phone? I went through her phone. And you could see it all there. I can't trust her. Don't waste my time. It ain't that many kissy faces in the world that you got to type after you meet a coworker at the park. Mm -hmm. This case was outright palooza, as Mr. Hammond claimed that his debauched spouse had imperiled their marriage with compulsive lies. He claimed that baby mama was busy with another when she conceived the baby. Mrs. Hammond, you claimed that after 10 years of marriage and repeated attempts to get pregnant, a month ago, you finally gave birth to your miracle baby, Isaac. You need today's result to prove to the defendant that this is his baby. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Initially, the defendant shed light on the habitual lying part. He claimed that his spouse had numerous guys in her life. She had a habit of manipulating people. Even she had made him a fool in their whole marriage of 11 years. But now it's time to show that enough is enough. She lies to my face constantly. So, so um, how am I supposed to believe someone who's, who's telling me it's night and it's daytime? You know what I mean? So you say she lies to you all, all the, the time? All the time, all the time. She, she, she had me in a snowsuit in the middle of summer. I can only be the fool so many times to, to where I'm putting my dukes up because it's I'm tired of being that fool. It turned out that Mrs. Hammond's promiscuity was at the peak that even her lovers gave the red flag to the defendant and dropped him a video of them banging his wife. But mommy tried to wipe it like this. I've seen a video of my wife giving oral <gasps> to, to another man. That is such a lie. There is no video. But was there a man and was there oral sex? In, in all honesty, um, there has been cheating on both sides. My husband cheated on me first. I took it the wrong way. About a year after that happened, I did end up, I, I cheated on him. Well, it was known on both sides. It wasn't something that I hid. So to prove his claims, the potential daddy brought evidence, which alleged that Mr. Hammond caught his wife texting another, which enraged him and he ended up posting something on Facebook. Uh, that should not be posted on social media. Come on now. The other man writes, so good to finally see you. You look hella good, babe. Made my day for show. And then you write, Mrs. Hammond, just made it back to sack. So and I miss you already seasons. too. And then the other man says, Thank you for texting me. Can't wait to see you again. Kiss, heart, kiss. Right. However, the plaintiff was consistently lying. She contended that there was nothing true in those text messages because it was one of her friends. But this time, Judge Lake jumped, cut her chase off, and did not let her nincompoop her like this. I met him at our local county park, um, said hello to him. It was a friend that we had both worked with. Don't waste my time. This is not an exchange between a coworker and you just met at the park for a minute. It ain't that many kissy faces in the world that you got to type after you meet a coworker at the park. Mm -hmm. Moreover, it was slipped that the woman had numerous other people in this paternity run, as she had been moving around with a single status that even claiming to be married shocked Mr. Hammond. You believe that this person could be Isaac's biological Correct. father? Yes, ma'am, and uh, numerous others. I mean, there's she's moved so single, I, I don't understand how she claims to be a married woman. One after another, mommy's lies were being caught. So Judge Lauren jumped into the birthday party. It was disclosed that the man did not help her even when she was about to give birth. He abandoned her and went to a casino with another woman. He left me at my house. He left and went to the casino with another woman. Mind you, after my water broke, I had to drive myself to the hospital. He didn't show back up to the hospital until 20 minutes before I gave birth. And he, he was there. He cut the umbilical cord, um, stayed for about maybe 45 minutes, and he left again. But the husband denied the claims and stated there were no other women with him because he went to gamble only. <laughs> This weird part triggered Judge Lake, so she reacted like this. Why were you at the casino gambling if your wife's giving birth That's a good to the question. baby you right. prayed for? Right, I can't have an answer for that one because I don't know. What kind of craziness is this? <laughs> right? Now that's one we've never heard, Jerome. My water broke, great, I'll be at the casino. Right, <laughs> jackpot. Apparently, mommy was a trollop and her unfaithfulness had made things go south. Still, the potential dad claimed that his spouse cheated on him with multiple men, even if it could be 13, 16, or more, because mama lied and swindled a lot. 
How many times have you cheated? I've been with three other people. I, I know at least six that, that, that she's been with. Why are you saying these numbers? Be because um, she would tell me anything. I mean, I've, I've been the, the brunt of the joke many times, you know what I mean? So it's, it's hard to, to for her to say, this is your child. Even though Miss Hammond's cheating had left her marriage at a vulnerable point, the only way to determine the truth about the baby was to uncover the secret the DNA envelope was holding. So let's get to those results. Mr. Hammond, you are the father. God answers prayers. Yes, ma'am. I get that. It's, it's time to be a man. What would you do if you see a girl wearing tight pants? Would you slide into her bed by selling dreams of wedding bells, as the man did in this case? Mr. Wiggins rolled up in the court seeking Judge Lake's help to get back his family. Let's hear what brought him into this mess. Mr. Wiggins, you are here in court to prove that you are not the father of Ms. Davis's child, Aubrey Wiggins, and say today's result will change your life. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. As a result of being alleged the father of Aubrey, I lost my wife and I want to regain my family. You lost your family? Your Honor, I was married and me and my wife went through a separation due to a rough patch. Wow, a brief separation gave him the pass of sleeping with another woman. It turned out that in no time, he was up to jiggery pokery with Miss Davis. Yet he wanted to free himself from accusations of being a father to a baby girl because his family was at stake. We was never together. Yeah, I was yeah. married, Your Honor. It just, you know, it kind of went longer than it should have. But your hope is that if you can prove that Aubrey is not your biological child, that you can convince your ex-wife, which is, you know, the woman, I guess she left because of this situation. Yes, ma'am. That you want to try to put the family back together. Yes, Your Honor. Further, the defendant claimed that they were in a committed relationship for two years and the man admitted to manipulating and lying to this young lady for his gain. Yet, blaming her was the reason he lost track of his family. Oh my, what kind of man is he? I knew I was in a relationship. You did? Two and a half we years not, we was together. I was telling her what I felt I needed to tell her to ultimately get what I wanted. Obviously, Me and you, and you might have gotten more than you bargained right. for, right? He did, he did, a child. He wanted to marry me, he wanted to get a divorce from his wife, no, he wanted to be with me. No, you Next, Judge Lake hopped into the pregnancy. It slipped out that Mr. Wiggins' mistress wanted his wife out of his life because she expected to have her whole life with him. So, put on his deception hat and duped baby mama like this. And I was good to her, I mean, because ultimately I was trying to get something out of her. So I did what I had to do, I felt I needed to do. Two and a half years, how we're not together. Things happen or said in the bedroom that may not always be. However, he asserted that Miss Davis approached his wife on Facebook and disrupted his married life. Man, are you out of your mind? I mean, he has no control over his desires and yet inoculated the defendant for the havoc? That just makes no sense. She inboxed her on Facebook, right. which caused a lot of havoc in my life. I was the opposed you was, to allow You wasn't to gonna be a man. Uh, did it cause the havoc or did you cause the havoc? He did, cause. Miss Davis immediately was like, well, it doesn't matter what nobody else think. Oh, I ain't going nowhere. Right, you know, there was cause this, you lay down with this me. Position, you was, this that, position that's that, your, that's I, your I've father, got you now. So you know I've it. got you now. Okay, so the next Chronicles of Wiggins started. He claimed that mommy had been busy with another man at the time she conceived the baby because he saw some text messages on her phone. So that's why he was denying paternity. My family member seen her be picked up by another guy. That was my cousin. That I she claims to be her cousin. While we were at the hotel, she happened to be taking a shower and I think I was using her tablet for something. And this guy inboxes about meeting her again and she's telling him, oh, I need some more I never loving. Slept with him, so to me, saying more means that it's already happened. To prove his sham show right, the alleged father brought an exhibit to the court. He alleged that Miss Davis had fabricated his name on the birth certificate, but how she forged his name was quite interesting. Duh. But the baby's mom wiped off all his lies like this. This is the birth certificate. Apparently she knew my name. This is the birth, the birth date that's listed on Aubrey's birth certificate. My birthday is November the 9th, 1990. The one this you wrote. This says 11, 11, 1990. I didn't wrote. write anything. And also in the state of Florida, because I was married, I wasn't just supposed to go on her birth certificate. Till now, it was apparent Mr. Wiggins was a compulsive liar who was putting on sham allegations about baby mama, and he was clowning just to defend himself. 
Further, it came out that they were still sleeping together, and it ticked Judge Lake, so she articulated the reality like this. When was the last time you two were intimate? It's been a while. Last night? No. Your Honor, we were at separate hotels, separate, no, Your Honor, that's and, not true. And you made your way to my hotel. That is not true, right. Your Honor. We did go to dinner, Your Honor. But and afterwards? I went to my respective places. No, she went he to came her. to my room. Mr. Wiggins, you look like you lying. No, because... <laughs> yeah, Judge Lake was right. He was playing on both sides of the fence, yet contended that he wanted to get his family back. However, their back and forth did not help and made things more complicated. So the last hope to get closure was to reveal the DNA results. Mr. Wiggins, you are the father. <laughs> Miss Davis, what are you feeling? I've been going through this for a long time, like between him and his wife, like. It's his child. Right. You are the father. Never let anyone take your absence for granted, or it may trap you in the paternity muddle. Mr. Taylor addressed Miss Jackson in front of Judge Loring to settle down the heated mess. He claimed that the defendant had made him a buffoon, as she was pregnant with someone else's baby, and he was unaware till nine months. Miss Jackson, you admit to an affair during the window of conception with Mr. Green, who will join us momentarily, but you are in court today to prove to Mr. Taylor that he is your son's father. Yes, Your Honor. The trial began with the deceiving saga. It turned out that the plaintiff turned on ghost mode, abandoned his family, and went to another city to pursue his career. Mommy claimed that she buzzed him on the phone, but he turned his back on her. Ugh, then why play the victim card? Mr. Taylor left me and my children um, stranded in Florida while he went away to, I guess, chase his dreams. Your knowing Honor, that we had something? nobody and knowing that we had nothing. And I felt alone and I felt as if I had no one. And I felt that Mr. Green was there for me when Mr. Taylor was not there for me. It turned out that when Mr. came back in the picture, the woman was already having hanky-panky with another man. But Mama shed some light on the truth. She said that Daddy never looked back to his family. So to find comfort, she brought another man in the picture. Green Mr. At. Taylor didn't send Where any money Green while he was away. All right, all right, back. all right, all right. This supposed job opportunity that he had, during this job opportunity, he never sent me or the kids any money. We barely had any contact with him. There was no one for me to turn to but Mr. Green. He was the person there for me, giving me emotional support. Further, Mr. Taylor alleged that the defendant got intimate with the other man right after he left. That precipitated the bickering in the court, because no one was ready to drop their allegation. But the defendant buckled up and advocated that they wouldn't have been in paternity court if the man had used his mind. Three days later, she was pregnant by October 12th. I left September 14th. If he would have never left us there in the first place, this whole situation could have been avoided. If he would have just left been a man about the situation, they have, be a man the about the situation, he have no leave a message, Kids was on leave the a message and say, I'm away. going to go. He's saying. However, Mr. Taylor disclosed that he has caught baby mama texting the other man. He told that she tried to settle with Mr. Green, but he denied the baby. So the mommy decided to make him adult and pin her child on him like this. Who is she texting? Mr. Green. Can I name the baby after you to stand the third? That's he the knows truth. the situation behind that. You're right now. I was messaging Mr. Green because I knew that he was potentially the father of my child. Whatever. And yes, I was messaging him, trying to be on his good side because I didn't want us to be on bad terms. How did you see her messages? You looked through her phone. I went through her phone. And you could see it all there. I can't trust her. For better understanding, and to create some sense, Judge Lake summoned Mr. Green to the podium and asked about the particular situation. He said that things were not in good circumstances when he started messing with Miss Jackson. So he asked her to move in with him. She, when I met her, she told me that he had left her for a rap career in Atlanta, just left and didn't want, want nothing to do with her, had nothing to do with her, didn't want to take care of the kids. So I'm sitting there, I feel there, bad. Right? So I sit there, I sit, feel bad. She got, you know, she got two kids. I look over, she messaging him stuff. I didn't really know what for, so I didn't really care. But I said, she told, she told me he didn't care. He, he stranded me down here with the kids. He don't care about the kids. From cheating to being caught red-handed, it revealed that the defendant changed her mind when she was kicked out of Mr. Green's house and got back with Mr. Taylor. 
but Mama denied the saga and shouted to her core to prove her point like this. You move in with I Mr. Know. Green. Yes, you're right. At what point do you go back to Mr. Taylor? When he dropped her. No, he didn't drop me. I left. I left. When he dropped her. No, I left. When he dropped her. Everything I'm saying is Your Honor, this man thinks just like he's this the child smartest mine. man in the world. Just like this child ain't mine. He, he knows I'm it's quite more Hold on, hold on. Let's not get out of control. As you know, one lie has the power to tarnish a thousand truths as it happened in this case. Ms. Jackson first asserted that her fiance was the father, but later it turned out that she didn't even know who the biological father of her baby was, cause she swindled around both men at the time she conceived. Your Honor, I, I don't know which one is the father, but okay. I have sex with both of them. That, that, thank you, that's oh, it, that. That, that's why we're here. So the bottom line is, is you really don't know. You yes, told Your him Honor, he was the father, you messaging him as well. Telling him he the father. Because you don't know. Yes. Okay. It was evident that both both parties were at daggers drawn, and no one was ready to drop their allegations. One after another, secrets were being revealed in the court, but nothing was helping them to get the closure they needed. So Judge Lake pulled the strings and decided to announce the results. His biological father is Mr. Green. I figured, that's fine. <laughs> If that's mine, that's good. And I respect you for being there. I was about to say, you gotta get child though. <laughs>